we land at Porto's Caniero Airport. The terrain is surprisingly hilly as we drive to the Duro Valley. We start to see more and more terraced vineyards. That's probably a winery on the hillside. This is definitely wine country. We have arrived. This is the Duro River. The city of Pasa de Hegua on the river. Our home for the next two nights, the Six Senses Duro Valley, looks like a old wine estate, but with a swimming pool. It's located on a bend in the river for a great view. The resort was purpose built, but they did a great job of making the new look like it fits. And it's time to eat again. We enjoy the same quality of presentation, preparation, and ingredients that we experienced at the Six Senses Ziggy Bay. In the morning, we're off to explore the Duro Valley. The river's been dammed since the late 60s for irrigation and flood control. Terraced vineyards occupy almost all of the steep slopes. This picturesque building is a railroad station. We're starting to see more wine estates among the vineyards. The town of Pinhau is where we board the boats. These are habelos, the traditional river boat that was used to carry wine barrels and people on the Duro River. They're flat bottomed with a shallow draft to navigate the shallow parts of the river. The name habelo means a little tail, the long rudder on the stern of the boat, which now that the boats are motorized is only for appearance. This is what a 19th century habelo looked like with no cabin for the tourist a little tail rudder, and a mast for the sail. We pass more wine estates. The Duro is the third longest river on the Iberian Peninsula. It's a nice relaxed ride on glassy waters. There's some familiar faces. River cruises on the Duro have become popular. There are some familiar names on the wineries, like Graham's. Before the railroad was built in the late 1870s, the Habello was the most efficient way to move wine to Porto. The Romans are credited with bringing wine grapes to the Duro. Winemaking in the area dates to the third and fourth centuries. In the 12th century, monasteries in the area were the primary wine producers. The earliest mention of port wine is in 1675. By 1700, wine was the primary product of the region and was economically important to Portugal. Now that we've seen where the grapes are grown, we're visiting Pacheca Winery to see how the port is made and maybe taste some. The winery and vineyards are located on a bend in the river opposite Hegua. The vineyard was first mentioned by name in 1738. The fruit is just starting to form. The grapes are dumped into these tubs. Then they're crushed by people stomping on them with their feet. The Cheka is one of the few wineries that still use this age old method. They claim that the gentle crush of foot creates a better flavor than the mechanical crushing. Then the grapes are fermented in these tanks. A distilled grape spirit is added to stop the fermentation and leave some residual sugar in the wine and boost alcohol content. Then the wine is filtered and transferred to smaller barrels and allowed to age for up to 20 years. Now we need to taste the product. We're tasting three wines today, two varietals and a port. First, the 2014 Vinhas Velas Reserve. 
within the 2014 Toriba Nacional Grand Reserve, and finally, the 40-year-old Tawny Port. Our guide explains the wines to us. The varietals are paired with local cheeses. The port was great with chocolate truffles. After a little recovery time back at the Six Senses Resort, we're back to doing what we do best, eat. We're dining at one of the premier restaurants in the area, DOC. The food is, as expected, exquisite. We're entertained by a Fado singer. Fado means fate or destiny. It is characterized by mournful tunes and lyrics, often about the sea or the life of the poor resigned to their fate. <laughs> In the morning, we drive back through the wine country to Porto. We have one more fine dining opportunity, lunch at the tea house. This is our last real meal together, and they make it a memorable one. There's foie gras, fresh fish three ways, and chocolate. Then it's back to Porto Airport and the flight to Lisbon and the end of the trip. Tomorrow we head on our separate ways. It's been a pretty amazing trip. 14 cities in nine countries. And 14 segments for 12,869 miles flown and 31 hours and 55 minutes flying time. So the first thanks goes to the wonderful crew of the Black Pearl. And a big thanks to Richard for making everything seem effortless, even though we knew it wasn't. Thanks to Giselle for her boundless energy and to Dr. Chang for keeping us healthy. And thanks to Joe for making sure our bags were always where they were supposed to be. Thanks to Wayne for explaining what happened in geologic time. And thanks to Craig for explaining what is happening in real time. Thanks to the exceptional local guides we had to explain it all, and to all the advanced people who smoothed the way. And a special thanks to our fellow travelers for your patience and curiosity. We hope to see you again somewhere on this blue marble we share. <laughs>